everybody, welcome to the Wolfpack Man YouTube channel, place for seeing old man opening old packs. Today's pack is especially old, 1976-77. Uh, what is that, 47 year old pack? But um, before I get to that, I was looking at my calendar, really high tech calendar that I have here. I have I have a calendar on my phone too, but, but <laughs> this, this is kind of my work, part-time job work calendar, and um, I noticed today is the 25th, it's so it, basically a week away from when I was planning in November to start live streaming, and I am having a hard time with the, the trying to pick when to live stream. I don't, I'm not sure what to do there because some days are good for opening packs, but my life and my schedule are kind of fluid. Some days are good for packs. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> some days are good for answering the phone. Some days are not. <laughs> um, you know, grandkids, some days I have grandkids. I, I never, you know, that's not really anything that's really fixed in stone. Uh, pickleball, it can be all over the board. You know, I've got this this Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I'm playing an insane amount of pickleball. Uh, my parents, you know, I love going up and uh, hanging out with my parents. They're they're both in their 80s and they're, they're still kicking it. And... Um, you know, maybe I have something to knock off uh, my wife's honey-do list. So I'm having a hard time saying, okay, how about every Monday and Wednesday and Friday or this and that. So then I'm like, well, maybe I just go live, you know, when it's convenient for me, which means I'm not scheduling a go live. But to me, the whole value of going live is that you schedule it and then people, uh, you know, like you guys can plan around it. So I'm, I'm just at a loss now. Uh, you know, I don't see the point in going live it, like this video I'm going to record it you know it's what 12:22 right now so hopefully by one o'clock I'll I'll be posting this video um, and and I <clears throat> but I'm recording it in you know what why I could have just as easily pushed the go live button I guess and um, so I'm versus recording I don't so I don't know so so I'm struggling um, open to suggestions. Um, yeah, I'm saying um a lot. That's that's the bottom line. So let let's just get to the fun part. This pack, because this pack could be <laughs> might have some trouble opening this thing. We're we're gonna find out in a minute. Um, so 1976, 77. Uh, who remembers 1976-77? Old like me, Jimmy Carter was elected president. Microsoft became a company in 1976. The thing I remember the most about 1976, though, was the 19... Because I was 15 then. 14 and 15. Was the Montreal hosted the Olympics. And the big story that, you know, there's one of the stories was, you know, this guy named Bruce Jenner, who's no longer a guy, was 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 a decathlon stud. But the real star of 1976 was that lady right there, Nadia Comaneci, Comaneci or Comaneci from Romania, was the world's first perfect 10 woman. Bar none. So those of you who are my age, you tell me I'm wrong, that she was a perfect 10. And that's what I remember the most. I, I have this magazine that I saved from then. It's practically, it's just like in mint shape. Uh, but that was my memento from the, from the 1976 Olympics. So uh, back, to these, back to this set of hockey cards. The base set, 264 cards. 44 of those are Hall of Fame players. It's time to butcher the names. Bobby Clark, Marcel Dion, Jim Rutherford, Bill Smith, Bob Ganey, John Buck, Larry Robinson, Bill Barber, Dennis Potvin, Ken Dryden, Stan Makita, Phil and Tony Esposito, Brad Park, Guy Lafleur, Guy Lapointe, and, of course, the Bobby Orr. So, amazing Hall of Famers. There were also 20 rookies in this set. Two of them went on to Hall of Fame status, Brian Trottier and, and 
Michel Bergeron. Uh, but the, there were a, 20 rookies. There were there were very, quite a few notable rookies, even though they didn't make the NHL Hall of Fame. Bernie Wolf went on to write a hockey book, kind of cool. Manitoba, Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame members Rick Blight and Kurt Ridley were rookies this year. Uh, the fifth pick of the 1975 draft was a Red Winger, Rick LaPointe. This was his rookie year. Uh, Bernie Boom Boom Giafron, uh, his son-in-law, uh, Hartland Monahan was also a rookie this year. Uh, future Red Wingers, Mel Bridgman and Hank Nowak. Uh, future politician, Bob McMillan. There was a player who was a rookie this year who scored 136 points in one season for the Washington Capitals, and that's still the Capitals' single-season record. Dennis Marouk, Alex Ovechkin holds second place for a single season record with 112 so he was he was literally 24 behind Ovechkin 24 behind this guy for a single but Ovechkin holds second third fourth and fifth place on the Capitals all all time single season record so that's kind of neat the the Dennis Marouk uh a Canadian forces lieutenant colonel Ed Senowski was part of this rookie class three times Stanley Cup Bill Nyra so this, so there were a lot of really cool rookies, and you know, I hope I pull one or two of those guys. So now comes the fun part. How do I open this? I was hoping I could just cut it with scissors. I'm not sure about the scissors. I, I also have these heavy-duty wire cutters. Maybe I should start here and... See. So this is the part where it's an advantage that I'm not streaming live because those of you who don't want to watch while I do this can, because I rec pre-recorded it, you can fast forward, just watch your screen, fast forward, and to the point where it's already open and I'm starting to put cards down on the table. So see, there's another reason. I guess not to live stream, but to record everything because who wants to watch old man with a pair of wire cutters doing his best not to uh, injure himself as <laughs> he's hacking his way through this. Uh... Oh, and I didn't even talk about this. So this is a uh, this is a uh, global authority. Um, is who did the grading. I don't know if I can get that to focus. And Global Authority and they, they 7.5 near mint. Again, 1976-77 top hockey. So. And, and again, I would encourage you especially those of you who don't have a lot of free time to uh, <laughs> zoom forward to the uh, to the point in the video where I'm actually opening stuff up because I'm kind of taking my time a little bit with this because I don't want to wreck anything. Whoa, glad I'm wearing glasses. Yeah, see, that doesn't make... Yeah. Yikes. I'm starting to get close to the pack. I don't like how that looks. I can see the pack. See the pack. <laughs> Starting to think about be the pack, see the pack, be the pack. I don't know where that came. Where 
that comes from. Yikes. Let's see if I could do Okay. It didn't I think I just got lucky. The pack is gonna slide out and <laughs> no damage. No damage done. Thank you. At least I hope not. We always know the front card and the back card always suck anyways because of the wax and the gum. So you're always going to... So those two cards are kind of always... But let's see what we have here. So, all right. So closer look at the back of the pack. Full color NHL cartoon embroidered patches. So that must have been a thing back then. And I am not having any luck with the autofocus. I hope that's not a sign for of, of times to come. And Renee Robert is the victim of the wax. <laughs> oh my goodness, and the gum. The gum is obliterated. I don't know if that's a bad sign or a good sign. <coughs> we'll put the gum there in this wax pack. Doesn't look too bad. I don't know. Global Authenticated. Global Authority, sorry. So see whether their authorities are not. Now let's come on autofocus. So there's Renee. Look at how beat up the, this back card is with the wax and everything. Man, that's of course 47 years. Who knows how long ago it was graded, but 47 years sitting in that pack. So, uh, so what do you expect? And the front of the card Kind of cool looking. There we go. Guy does not look happy. <laughs> Looks like a hockey player. Derek Sanderson. <laughs> These guys, <laughs> very similar poses. Tony Esposito. That's awesome. Oh, look at this card. This card's sweet. Oh, that's a cool card. Uh, Pierre LaRouche. And that's about as close to an action photo as you're going to get back then. Uh, Butch Goring. King Center. All right, now we're at the halfway point. So we got this insert, and then I'm going to flip it over. So here's the insert, John Buck. Pretty cool. And the back card, which would have been the gum card, does not look bad at all. Ron Stackhouse. I don't really see any gum stain. And he's my, okay, he's the second mustache card. And what do we have left? We have three cards left. This is a Boston Bruins team checklist. So we got a Boston Bruins team photo. From 1976. That's cool. Oh, here's Ed Stanowski. Stanowski. Stan, Stanowski. He was the one who was lieutenant colonel in the trying to find it in the Canadian Forces. So this is his rookie card for a future lieutenant colonel. How cool is that? 
That is not Lieutenant Colonel Hare though, so that's going to have to go. And the last card in here is card 67, Trottier NHL top rookie sets two league records. So how about that? Is I know that this is, I know they're going to say this isn't his rookie card, but it's a card from his rookie year. So how can it not be his rookie card? I don't understand why the trading card database does not have these cards set as rookie cards. But between the Esposito, that, that, that was a cool rip. <laughs> Finish with a rookie Hall of Famer. How about that? So kind of excited. Peace and pickleball. Peace and pickleball. Sorry I was so long today, but um, I will get this video out by 1 o'clock today and look forward to hearing some of your thoughts about the whole idea of going live and scheduling and how how you'd like to see it work and I will try to come up with something um, maybe I commit to uh, at least one or two times in days a week that that I'm scheduled and then I do some freestyling the, the, the rest of the week alright peace